boy. Hey. Too busy, huh? Well, I'm not. Hi, everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center, along with Cascade the Wonder Dog, who's wondering what we're doing way out here at the point. Well, as you can see over my shoulder, there's something we're going to discuss today. And uh, did I say we're out in far west Texas? If I didn't, we're out in far west Texas. Anyway, what I wanted to discuss is what's behind me. And I was, it was requested by the fellow who was kind enough to not once but twice bring a big skid steer piece of equipment out here to build this dam for me. The dam behind me dammed up my arroyo. Now, I'll give you a better view of the arroyo from behind the camera, but the arroyo spans about 11 acres. We have only 20, so it's 11 or 12 acres it spans. So it actually takes up most of our property, which is fine because we weren't going to use it. It's desert. We can't use all of it in the middle of the desert unless you graze cattle and let's not go into the um, ecological disaster that cattle raising is. However, he built the dam. It was fairly easy because the arroyo narrows and when after he built it we had some rain but we haven't had a lot of rain at one time this year and we haven't had our monsoonal flow yet this year. It's now the 20th of September which is late for the monsoon. I did hear on the um, part-time weather channel, full-time cheap Canadian reality show channel, that um, the monsoonal flow appears to be starting late in, uh, in, in Arizona in the southwest, and it's going to be helped by a hurricane that's um, coming into um, uh, Baja, California. But anyway, we might get more rain, but we did get a surprise storm right over the top of us that dumped about two and a half inches, man, about two inches of rain on us in about an hour and a half. So it was quite a rainstorm, and it put all this water in the, in the arroyo behind the dam. Now there is no spillway on the dam on purpose. The dam is built to block the entire arroyo. We estimate the arroyo will hold over 9 million gallons of water at the way it's built now. 9 million gallons of water and we have never had a rainfall or three in a row here in the nine and a half years we've lived here that would have put nine million gallons in the arroyo. So that's why we don't have a spillway because I don't think it's ever going to spill. We're stopping the water from about, I'd say about 300 acres of land that drains into here. We're stopping this water and holding it. Now, we didn't build the, um, the, the, the arroyo, because we didn't build it, it's natural, so that the arroyo would hold water. We didn't put any liner or clay or any of the things that, that uh, some people will say, why don't you do this, why don't you do this, send me a video, show me how you did it. Uh, we didn't do that on purpose. Because I want the water to infiltrate in, I want it to nourish the whole area here, and I want it to naturally build up. You know, the fine silt and fine clays will naturally build up starting at the base of the dam and running backwards until it holds water. Now that takes time, and we're Americans, and we're impatient as hell, and you know, we want everything to happen tomorrow. And you have to think, this is a universe that since time began is only about 11 billion years old, or 13 billion years old. Uh, and, and we can't think in terms of even our lifespan. So we can't be Americans and say, I want it tomorrow. So it's going to build slowly. In the meantime, it's going to provide a habitat. Now, I tried, I tried to catch the ducks. They're shoveler ducks, and I tried to catch those ducks when I came in. What they did was they flew around. They were, they've been here for two days. They flew around and they went to the far side of the arroyo. Now we're going to go over there and actually scare them up. Again, I don't want to scare them, but um, I, I want to show uh, Steve, who asked for um, who asked for this uh, pictures and this video. Um, we're going to show Steve what the other half of the arroyo looks like. So we will scare them back up, uh, but we'll try to make it as quick as possible. So anyway, behind me is what's left of the water from the rain the night before last. Uh, some of it came, some of it has drained away, but not a lot of it. Um, but uh, by my estimation, there's probably a hundred thousand gallons in what we can see right here. And the other half should have more water in it. We're going to walk down uh, and take a look at it right now. Well, let's take a little arroyo walk across the dam. As I walked up here, I don't know if you guys can notice or not, but there's little. Um, uh, ripples appearing on the surface like we might have picked up some um, 
I hate to say pick up some fish, but we could have picked up some mosquito fish, I guess. It's not entirely impossible. Walk along the dam. Um, that water here is about two and a half feet deep. Now those of you that have watched my videos in the past, there's a video called Hunting uh, Firewood in the Real Badlands. That was kind of a play on that stupid National Geographic show where they took a tragic death of one of our uh, business owners here in Terlingua and turned it into a, uh, uh, a little mini-series showing how stupid and ignorant uh, the people were. They took everybody whose headgear of choice was, um, uh, was tinfoil and interviewed them uh, that I wouldn't they asked me and I wouldn't interview because um, I knew where they were going with that but anyway I did that video I was hunting firewood out here so this is the same badlands just dammed up I'm not sure that I can walk on that now I won't be able to walk on that so I'm going to turn this off for a second and get down oh but look Look at down here. Now these plants have sprouted up and grown since we put this in in April. Uh, so that's the beginning of what happens when you just let nature go ahead and take its course. This is really kind of cool. All right, let me move over. I'm going to scare those ducks up again when I turn this back on. But you can get an idea. The water's only out about, what, 80 feet, 90 feet from, um, from here. We are expecting more rain uh, today, tomorrow, and Sunday, if it comes. We'll see if that adds to this or not. There's Cascade walking down the road by the bench for the bus stop. That's what we jokingly call it. Somebody put it there. And uh, actually, one of the uh, people that lives in cl close proximity to me, um, can't call him a neighbor because a neighbor would indicate friendship, but uh, that person put, uh, called it the bus stop. And right around this last little bend here is going to be where the, the second half of the dam is. This is where the majority of the water always would go uh, before we dammed it. And the ducks are back here now. They're going to go up. We'll probably only get a fleeting glimpse of them taking off. And yes, I've stocked my tires back there. That's not permanent, but we had to, uh, had to do something with them. Yeah, I see the ducks. I don't know if you can see the ducks or not. Yeah, you can. Let's zoom in some. Oops, sorry about the hand. Okay, let's walk up there. They're going to go as soon as I, they, they, they think I'm a threat. They're going to go. And Steve will give you a look at the... Uh, this half. Now this is the half that blew out. Right where I'm stand right where I'm pointing is where it blew out. And uh, it's been repaired and it's definitely holding water. There they go. There's about 25 of them. We, asked, we thought there were 50, but there's only about 25 of them. Okay, now this water here is deeper. You can see we have a deep pool here. Now just so that some some troll that has no idea how much physical work is involved in, well, anything, doesn't comment. Uh, we are going to move those tires, but uh, they are difficult to move. But those tires are getting moved and sequestered in a place where nobody will ever see them again. But uh, that's not a today job. So anyway, Steve, here's your dam. This is a repair. This part looks like it's going to hold just fine. Um, we can only handle about two more feet of water here, and just looking down there, that means, oh, maybe 80 or 90 yards in that direction before we fill up, uh, you know, to the point where it would breach. But there she is. There's my cat stalking us. I just thought I'd show everybody Bruce the cat. Okay, the ducks are flying around. They want to get settled back in, so Cascade and I have to get out of here. I'm seeing a lot of ripples here in the water. I don't know if it's insects or fish. If it's fish, well, they aren't going to get to uh, they aren't going to get to live for very long because this water, unfortunately, will be gone within three weeks. 
uh, unless we get more rain. But we'll see what happens. So in, uh, for now, let's let the ducks get back in. We'll end this thing here. Steve, I hope I got you got to see what you wanted. Everybody else, this is how it starts. And just very, very briefly, so that the ducks can come back, very, very briefly, um, if we all do something like this, whatever we can to restore the ecological balance in our area, even if it's a house in the subdivision, whatever we can do, replant native plants or hold water, not impound water, not try to create a lake, not try to create a big thing that you can rent jet skis in or some other foolish foolishness, just to hold the water, especially in the desert, if you can hold the water on your property and let it infiltrate in, it will do wonders, but it takes time. It does take time. So we're going to uh, see what happens here. You'll check in every once in a while. You guys will get to see it from time to time if you watch the videos. And go out and do something like this on your property, even if it's planting a couple of trees. You know, I heard that... Um, uh, if we if we planted something like uh, like 30 billion trees, we could uh, we could mitigate some of the uh, effects of man-made climate disruption. Plant a couple trees on your property. If you own five acres, plant 500 trees. Do something, just like I've done here and all over our property. And until next time, it's Robert Earl, Cascade the Wonder Dog, and the rest of the family out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in Far West Texas, saying. See you later.